the Greensill scandal, the stench of corruption gets thicker. We commented on the fact that the top civil servant who was the head of government's procurement arm, Bill Crothers, was appointed as a director of Greensill Finance only months after he left the civil service. It now transpires that he actually worked part-time for Greensill. The revolving door between the civil service and big business is clearly much wider and more extensive than we are led to believe. It is common practice for budding business executives to be seconded to the civil service, as it is for civil servants to be seconded in the opposite direction. As a result of the exposure of his own personal role in lobbying on behalf of Greenshill Finance, former Tory Prime Minister David Cameron has been forced to admit not only that he works for Greenshill, but that he met with Matt Hancock and texted Rishi Sunak on behalf of the company. It's the next big scandal waiting to happen. A former Prime Minister under fire. After weeks of silence, David Cameron, who himself in 2010 warned about lobbying, has admitted he shouldn't have emailed or texted cabinet ministers on behalf of Greensill Capital. But as pressure builds for an investigation, he also defended his right to represent the business's interests at the very heart of government. Offshoring corporation, complex ownerships between related companies, tax dodging and fiddling on a massive scale, these are the norms for British big business. For once, a Labour frontbench spokesperson, Rachel Reeves, seemed to say something worthwhile. In relation to the lobbying scandal, she told the Iron newspaper, This doesn't just show that the Tories can't be trusted to reform lobbying. They don't even know where the line of integrity lies. But actually, it's much, much wider than this. It's about lobbying, it's about sleaze, it's about cronyism and corruption, and it's about access to ministers, not because of what you've got to bring to the table, but because of whose telephone number you've got, what contact lists you've got, and it's not the way that government should be done. This is absolutely correct. But the Reeves' drive against corruption would be a lot more convincing if she also campaigned against former Labour ministers, who now operate as professional lobbyists, like Starmer's new advisor, Lord Mandelson. Labour is losing support in its former heartlands, especially in the North and in Scotland. If it is ever to start regaining support among ordinary workers, it must begin to demonstrate that it really is different to the Tories, and not just Tory light. It must be seen to be not just a little bit better, but fundamentally different in its whole approach to sleaze, corruption and cronyism.